What is critical thinking and why should I care? If I'm being critical of you, you may say, why can't you be more supportive? People don't tend to like being criticized or to react to it well. But critical thinking isn't critical in this sense. It's much more interesting than this. Although it too can make people uncomfortable. When in fact, making yourself uncomfortable is a large part of what happens when you think critically. Because it's all about taking a moment to go beyond the obvious and ask what you do and don't actually know. A critical thinking, it's tricky to pin down, but its opposite, uncritical thinking, is obvious and all around us. Thinking uncritically involves accepting something at face value without pausing to consider whether it's sensible or justified. An advert says a beer is the best in the world, and I believe it. A politician says they genuinely care, and I nod. A leading academic comments that eating fat is good for me, and I go out and buy some bacon. Most importantly, uncritical thinking is, is not the same as being stupid. And critical thinking is not something that smart people always do. Most of the time, most people don't and can't think critically about what they're doing. We don't have the time, we don't have the energy. It simply isn't practical for me to wonder every time whether a green light means I really should go, or whether spaghetti is truly a superior pasta to tagliatelle. Knowing when and how to engage critically is a question of habit and strategy, more than of intellect. But, once I have the right tools, I can question almost anything. And these tools are embodied in two related concepts, skepticism and objectivity. Skepticism means doubting the truth of something. And objectivity means trying to see something from a more neutral point of view, trying to set aside my own feelings and bias as far as possible and to establish the facts that matter. And this it may sound easy and obvious, yet it's at once difficult and achingly unnatural. As the British author George Orwell once rather neatly put it, to see what is in front of one's nose needs a constant struggle. And in general, one is only right when either wish or fear coincides with reality. People used to think the world was flat, because it looked and felt flat, until new knowledge prompted sceptical thinkers to challenge this view. People used to think that the sun orbited around the Earth, because it looks like it does, until gradually the accumulation and analysis of new knowledge brought new understandings that were themselves updated as we learn more about the universe. A rigorous critical thinking, in other words, means not only explaining why we believe something to be true, but also being obliged to change our minds when the facts change. And people don't tend to like changing their minds, especially if they're in the business of looking confident and telling other people what to do. Perfect objectivity is impossible, but progress isn't. In a hundred years' time, quite a few of today's beliefs will be considered laughable in the light of new knowledge. Can you think of any ideas ripe for challenge or replacement? This is how knowledge and understanding grow over time, if and when they do. When we test our thinking not by seeking confirmation, but by looking hard for things we still cannot explain. So, ask what doesn't add up in the world around you, and where the world falls short of what it might be comfortable to assume. That is critical thinking.